Where have you heard that before? How about nowhere? You hear so much talk, so many articles, so many books on getting good queen acceptance and very few of them talk about that. First I'm going to say what, he was, what Brother Adam was talking about right there was maturity. Okay, He was talking about the behavior, that, that, you know, the distinctions in behavior between very young queens and queens that have gotten a little time on them and they've settled down just like people. The older folks, you know, the 20-year-old's going to be a lot more settled than the 16-year-old and so on. Queens are the same way. So let's take a minute and dissect this thing. I'm going to give you the, um, the study, the information you can write down to go to this study. It's the same man that wrote uh, Fat Bees, Skinny Bees, Doug Somerville. He's a pretty sharp guy. So what this is about is they're figuring out how many queens are left at a given point in time and comparing the age of the queens when they were harvested and introduced. So this is Australia, by the way, so when you're looking at the dates, that's going to seem a little squirrely, but this is Australia, okay? So you're looking at November, December. M stands for mating nuke. You, now let's go introduce, introduction survival percent. 14 days later, that seven-day-old queen, only 15% of them were there. Now let's go down to the second column. This is the place where most queen producers harvest their queens. They're on a 14-day or a two-week cycle. Most of the queen producers I know in South Georgia do this. They're on a 14-day cycle, and that's how they're producing mass quantities of queens rapidly. But let's go all the way out to the end and see how many are still in the hive 14 days later. But look what happens if you just add one week, just seven days, just let that queen begin to lay. At 14 days, she's just barely starting to put out eggs, probably doesn't even have a larva yet because she's not old enough for any of her eggs to have hatched. You might see a few, but generally, queens might start laying 11 to 13 days, somewhere in there. So at 14 days, she's just beginning to lay, and they're harvesting that queen. Now we're up to 15 weeks. How many are present after 15 weeks? Now we're talking about supersedure rate. How many are superseded before you get to four, four months old? Now here's another interesting one. This is pheromone level at these different ages. The peak seems to be between 21 and 28 days. That tells me that that's where you want to be harvesting your queen out of the queen mating nuke and trying to introduce her into a colony. Her pheromone levels are peaking. She settled down. Um, what's going on with this maturity and this behavioral problem is that a 14-day old queen, when she finally gets out of that queen introduction cage, she's very nervous. And the bees pick up on that instantly. If she was mature and settled, just being cool, calm, and collected, the bees are much more apt to accept her. Plus, she's got this increased pheromone level. This is queen acceptance in a nutshell right here. And that's why you're having so many failures with your packages. And Steve Tabor did a little experiment. In fact, he writes about it in his book, uh, Breeding Super Bees. He said that, he, I think he called his co-worker Roberts, I can't forget the fellow's name, but I remember the number. They had mature colonies that were, you know, into the season, actively laying, mature queens, and 292 times they took a queen out of one colony, a queen out of another, switched them and dropped them, and in 292 times had no failure.
zero. The queens were mature. He called it balance. He was of the opinion that it had to do with balance. In other words, the two queens are doing the same thing and they're going into colonies that are doing the same thing. And he said, if you keep that balance correct, that you can just move queens around at will. We, we, we saw all those charts that said letting a queen lay for a little longer gets you a, a better success, better queen, less supersedure, better acceptance, all those things. And let's say the average queen costs $25, just, just use that number. Is there anybody in this room that wouldn't pay an extra five bucks to get a queen that had just been allowed to lay another week or two? Surely not. If you buy a queen out of South Georgia and you receive that queen on the 15th or 20th of March, you've got a queen that got pushed out of the gate pretty early. Um, the drone population probably wasn't ideal. The weather may not have been ideal. And she may not have been mated well. And you'll get even a higher uh, problem with supersedure and, you know, just low quality queen, basically. If you add that on top of a two-week cycle and put it all together, you get a package that's, you're only going to have 20% of them be successful. By, by 15 weeks, you know, you're going to have lost three-quarters or more of those queens. The buyer needs to get educated and understand what it is they're doing. And don't touch those early queens. Wait till, and that, in Charleston, wait until the 1st of April has got to be tough because your bees are exploding by then. What do you do? Well, don't buy, somehow figure out how not to buy a March 15th queen out of South Georgia because she's, she's not going to do a great job for you. Now, there's exceptions. This is a generalization. There are years where they're early and the drone population's great and they have wonderful mating weather and everything's perfect. But uh, let's play the odds. If you're playing poker, you wouldn't do it. You'd wait till the 1st of April and, and play the odds and when they're in your favor of getting a better queen. So it's really our fault. I've been there. I've done that. I mean, when, when, you're, when you're making nukes, you want to get the queen that's the earliest so you can start making nukes, you know. And I've, uh, I've come to resist that urge because it, I want to put out a quality product. And I don't, honestly, I don't want a bunch of phone calls three months later going, my queen's gone. What went wrong? I don't want to deal with it. So it's almost a self, you know, thing for me, a, a kind of a survival. I don't want a bunch of phone calls saying we got bad stuff and, having to help people figure out what went wrong. If I can do it right in the first place, I have a lot less issues. So I've learned to just wait. Now, of course, now I'm not even buying queens in South Georgia. I keep saying South Georgia. This is everywhere, Texas, Louisiana, uh, California. You know, you need to figure out. And how do you ask your producer, well, how long do you let your queens lay? <laughs> you know.
Timing, that's obvious. Nectar flow, we talked about that. Cold, nasty weather, like, uh, you know, in, be in between flows, you can have a little less acceptance rate. Feeding actually helps acceptance. If you feed in such a way that you don't create robbing, robbing is just ruins your percentages of queen acceptance. So if you're feeding, you got to be very careful not to dribble around where the bees can get to it and cause robbing. Don't use honeybee healthy and those type of things that are very attractive. Uh, honeybee healthy can cause robbing quicker than anything if you dribble a little around. Sometimes it, you don't even have to dribble it. They, the other colonies can smell what's in the colony and they'll be trying to get in the cracks and crevices. It's the lemongrass oil. It's extremely attractive to bees. But uh, gorged bees will accept a new queen much more readily than bees that are not gorged. And uh, honey, honey flow is a really good time to introduce a queen for the same reason. Weather, obviously, if it's a really nice, beautiful period of time, you're going to have much better um, queen acceptance. And for reasons that may not be perfectly or readily obvious, and that is that the field force is leaving for the day. It's the older bees that don't want to accept a new queen. The young nurse bees that have never been out of the colony, if you can have only young nurse bees, your chances of queen acceptance under any circumstances are really, really high. And I mentioned field force there. Let me tell you a little story. This is going to sound extreme and abusive and all of that, but I, I want to tell it because it explains a point. I had a friend in Oregon uh, that would requeen routinely in late summer when there was no honey flow, and he had exceptional success. And this is how he did it. His yards were large, whatever would fit on a truck. You know, I have the habit of doing that myself. Our trucks will hold 64 or 48, so that's what the yard is. He would pick up the yard in the middle of the day, broad daylight, bees are flying, and he would move it a mile or two to someplace down the road. He would lose all of the field force. And for one day or two days, they would be completely depleted of those older bees. And that's when he would requeen. And he had great success. And he would leave a pallet of bees behind to receive all of those. And trust me, that pallet that got left behind suddenly was really, really strong. But all those bees would come home to that pallet in that yard that was a mile or and Oddly enough, he would try to find a yard that was close. So even the bees that didn't fly out while he was driving on the truck would still find their way home. A mile will work. He loses the field force. He has an exceptional uh, queen acceptance, even in a dearth period, by doing that. If you're making nukes, you can use this uh, strategy to your advantage. We really, whenever we can, we really like to make our splits and leave them in the same yard because all the field force goes home to the mother colony and will have much better queen acceptance in the nuke. And uh, if you're going to do that and the weather, the weather is still cool, you can compensate for the bees that are leaving by shaking in extra bees off of open brood because that's going to have a high percentage of nurse bees on it. Those nurse bees don't know the, their way home and they'll stay in the nuke you shake them in. We like to shake in at least two extra frames when we do that. If it's really going to be very cold weather, we might choose to do three frames and do that. Now, in Charleston, South Carolina, on a hot summer day, that's almost a non-issue because it is so warm that it only takes half as many bees to keep the brood warm. Now, in North Georgia in the Appalachian Mountains, where our nights cool down, we got to be a little bit more mindful of putting those extra bees in there when we make a split to keep the brood warm. So when you come down to introducing queens, let's get past the maturity and the behavior and all of that stuff. Um, well, actually, this does have a little bit to do with maturity and behavior. If you, this is what we call a homemade push-in. You can buy them from some of the bee supply catalogs that make them out of plastic. 
what I'm doing here is I've opened that little side door on the queen cage and I'm letting the queen out into that cage and then I'm going to close that door. You see the little door that I've got bent there on the side? And then I'm going to push that cage down. The, the cage is one inch high if you're trying to make them yourself. It's just one eighth inch hardware cloth. I push the cage down to the mid rib. It's, it's very important that you get it all the way down to the plastic because the bees will try to chew under it. They'll try to tunnel under it. And it also obviously works way better if you're using plastic foundation instead of beeswax because they'll tunnel from behind trying to get her out of there. What I've done is I've chosen a frame and uh, there are some cells that are on the verge of hatching underneath that cage. There are some cells that are wide open and clean and ready to lay in underneath the cage. When I push her down in there, she's alone. The bees that hatch in that cage over the next day or two instantly accept her as their queen. They've never known anything else. And I'll leave that cage in there for a week, maybe two, depending on how, if she's a thousand dollar breeder queen, I'm going to give it all the time I feel like I need to. And when you come back, she's going to have some of her own brood, her own bees, even though she didn't, you know, lay the eggs, they're her bees now because they hatched in there with her. And you can get pretty close to 100% acceptance doing that. It's worth the trouble, you know, obviously you've got 2,000 colonies, we can't do that to 2,000 colonies, we use other tricks and stuff, but if you really, really, really want to make sure your queen gets accepted, that's the way to do it right there. <clears throat>